then let's start of course from uh, the aftermath. It seems like your idea for streaming show is go big or go home, but where did the idea kind of get its start for doing a grandiose virtual show? Uh, well, you know, we've been trying to find some way to present ourselves in a way that fits our band. You know, we like big stages and uh, decors. And so um, when we perform, we have all this epic stuff on the stage. And when you do the online shows, they always get to be so, you know, uh, it's very minimalistic. And that doesn't really suit our band. So we were really searching for something that could... Uh, replace that uh, the, the epic feel that we want to present also visually and with this uh, VR um, 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 show that we're going to do we were for the first time able to do that in a certain way and um, we were approached by someone who makes videos uh, he the guy who approached us um, the, he also made our uh, supernova video and we had experience with him and we know he can make all these uh, really big epic stuff so we have a very big trust in him so we said okay let's try this and see where it gets us because the max is the limit with the vr shows you can build anything in 3d and that's for us very inspiring so we felt like let's go for it now the opportunity is there and the technology is there also uh, yeah, like you said, you wanted to kind of fit the streaming gig to within temptation. So what have your own thoughts been on the streaming gigs uh, in general as a musician and maybe as an audience member too? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm not really into, uh, you know, the, the very online uh, acoustic things, but it's more for our own band. I think it depends what kind of music you make, if it fits or doesn't fit. and. Um, I, I see that a lot of people are picking up the, the virtual reality kind of thing more and more. Um, you here in the Netherlands, you have Tomorrowland, for instance, who did also a very big a VR uh, a impressive um, uh, show with a big tree and, and the DJ standing. So you you get you know that's really nice to see that technology is finally there that a lot of people can do it in their own music style. Yeah, there's. Uh info about a lot of uh, guest vocalists. Are you leaking any of those beforehand? Uh, <laughs> yes, we are. We have, we've already announced Jasper Stevelink. He's from the band Arid. I don't know. Uh, he used to be from the band Arid. He's now solo, but um, he performed on our latest album. He's going to be there. Uh, and it's okay, which we did uh, the last uh, single uh, with, of course. They're going to be there and a few more. And uh, there's some, some people still to be announced. Okay, what kind of undertaking has it been to kind of gather all these people in this time? And uh, was that part of the reason why the shows actually got uh, postponed too? No, no, it does. Uh, well, it was a, a big undertaking for some, you know, and it's okay, they're from Germany, so they came over. But for someone else, we had to go to a different country and record, record certain stuff and do certain stuff with them so we could uh, integrate that into our show. So it was a big undertaking, and uh, at the same time, um, it's such a big project. It's such a technical uh, project. A lot of things can go wrong, and uh, that's also why it's pre-recorded live. And because there's so many worlds, and we have so many things, so many cameras. It's a, a 30 meter stage. It's uh, and cameras all all around. So it's like from every angle you can show a person. And so it's very dynamic and we have real light shows like uh, this, this show of ours was designed by uh, a light engineer, which is not very usual. It's very unusual, but this way you can integrate the live feel with the live lighting it does do a lot of dynamics for the VR kind of show. So um, that's why this is a different technology than some others have used so far. And um, thing is that uh, because of the so much data it really there's a lot of things that can go wrong so that's why um yeah we had some to postpone it a little bit because it took more time to to get it done storyline is of course of a post-apocalyptic world so uh you already touched on this uh, a bit so how long did it take to kind of develop the story and everything you just uh, described uh well, I think we started with this um, yeah, last year a little bit. 
talking about it and then finalizing it actually like the storyline everything like a month ago or something it was finished but we're still actually working at this moment to finish stuff so <laughs> but we're gonna be on time we're not gonna postpone again yeah the post-apocalyptic uh, world is uh, quite fitting to our time indeed so how has Sweeting Temptation been doing during the pandemic? Uh, well, we continued writing and uh, releasing some songs. That was actually uh, something that we had already pre-planned because we were supposed to go on tour with, uh, with Evanescence. And in the meantime, we wanted to, while we're on tour, uh, release a few new songs, uh, write in the moment, record in the moment and release it. Um, we stuck to the plan uh, um, and, and with with the pandemic, you know, a lot of people started doing the same thing because, well, everybody was at home and had nothing to do. But it's a, a very unusual thing for maybe a rock band to do because normally you write two years and then you release it and then you go on tour. But now we're just writing a song, releasing it, and we don't have an album yet. So that's something new for us and something that we want to explore for a long time because other music genres are doing that already for a long time. And uh, we felt like it's nice to do that, that the song still has a certain um, connection to the time you're when you're writing it. How are you planning the future at the moment? I think I know things are looking a bit better, but it's still, uh, you know, everybody's guess what's going to happen next month. Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit strange, of course, because there's a new uh, variants, of course, of the of the of the virus coming. So, um, well, I, I'm going to Finland, so <laughs> we're doing a festival. So uh, that's something that I'm looking forward to. So, but on the other hand, yeah, I'm still it's still strange that maybe things are going to change again, backwards again. I don't know. It's just all it's guessing for everyone, I guess. But I'm hoping that we can do some shows and uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Okay, if you don't mind, could we take a little um, a trip down memory lane, if you will, and uh, scoot from the recent events back to actually to year 96. I wanted to hear like, uh, how did you see like the events looking back now, you know, I mean, uh, with Robert's, uh, Robert had the band The Circle, then the two of you had The Portal that transformed into Within Temptation. So how do you see the events now looking back? What was happening? Um, you know, we, we've seen every stage of, of development. Like we still, we're from an age that we still know what a cassette is. I know what a vinyl is. I know what a CD is and um, now the streaming. So a lot of has changed, of course, throughout the time. And for we still at the time that you're talking about we even had a demo and a demo with it on the cassette and um, it wasn't vintage yet <laughs> so it was still a bit old school but uh, yeah so um yeah a lot of has changed and also musically i think we still have that feel that we love to make mystical uh, mystical sounds and epic sounds and even with the circle it was already there and um, we like the darkness and the lights and, you know, combining and clashing. So uh, we like poetry and those kind of things are still there, I guess. Although we have developed the full course and explored every time a new sound and trying to stay, um, well, that, 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 that you want to keep up with the sound of the day, you know. And you want to sound like a band that is evolving and you want to evolve because it's interesting and challenging. We talked about writing new music and uh, you mentioned the demo. So what are kind of the first things that come to mind when you think about writing and recording the enter demo or why not the enter album too? Uh, <laughs> well, it was very uh, hardcore because I think I did my vocals, for instance, in one day, which now I have a day, a song or maybe longer if I want to, because I'm recording at home nowadays. Everybody has a home studio. In that time, um, yeah, it was, but it was also a lot of fun. There was a lot of tension and excitement, and it was the first time we're going to do this. And so I have a lot of great memories of that because, you know, we were all kids still, and uh, yeah, exploring uh, for the first time things and things that you do for the first time are the most um, they leave a mark on you on in a good way, I think, because it has a certain melancholy to it and has uh, yeah, that that that's young vibe to it that we're sort of like oh still like discovering the whole music uh, 
and, and everything and where we wanted to go to with ourselves and our bands and yeah we had a lot of dreams and we still have actually we try to because you need to make new ones every time we've been of course talking about the huge uh, upcoming virtual gigs the aftermath but uh what about the first tours back then you know first in uh Netherlands and then you know going to Austria and Germany too. Uh, well the thing is with, when we were touring uh, we didn't know what was happening to us as a band because every s venue we went to was sold out and but it was because there was something you know there's something in the air sometimes sometimes I don't know um, every show we did we were all in, uh, going to school still or uh, just graduated and I had our first job and so we combined everything. So it was a very chaotic, but also exciting time. And we were very surprised. So many people every time came, uh, you know, uh, showed up at our shows and it was every time sold out. And so we did, uh, they asked us for a uh, Dutch tour. So we did a Dutch tour and then Germany and uh, Austria we did with label mates orphanage amazing band still uh, they don't exist anymore and uh, we went uh, on a european tour uh, through germany austria and uh, i think also one show in switzerland i thought but anyway that was a crazy tour because you know it was really a learning how to be on stage and discovering everything technically but also how do you prepare for a show and those kind of things and uh, we had so much fun it was it was um yeah falling in love with what you're doing and you already liked what you're doing because you're making the music and everything but the touring and everything was really like icing on the cake you know like uh, seeing how people react to your music and uh, that was an amazing tour and but they also thought was that you uh, the first tour that you do there was a lot of um well budget problems like you know like because we had a bus and it was uh, wrapped together with gaffa tape i think because every we had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, draft coming in and it was leaking everywhere and <laughs> but it didn't stop the fun that we had together so we had a great time yeah we mentioned the year uh 1969 and uh, with my math that makes a quarter of a century for within temptation so what kind of feelings and thoughts does that bring up you know it's almost hard to imagine that it's already been so long that we've been a band and making music and being able to do this because it sometimes still feels like like you know that how it all came together we were never set out to be a band that was going to do this uh, like like uh, professionally we always had the idea of working and having a hobby band beside it and it just exploded so i'm really grateful that we uh, got the opportunity and that things just went how they went because it's the best job <laughs> in the world the only one they applaud you know for so it's a, if you do it right though but uh yeah so we have we are still uh yeah we're having a lot of fun and that's i think to do something that you love so much is probably the biggest joy you can have in life i think because i don't want to do a job that doesn't fit me or that i don't doesn't bring joy to my life so i'm i'm really uh yeah it's still uh and we're still enjoying it so much so People always say like, are you going to do like a tour that's going to celebrate a certain album, Mother Earth album, please, or the Silent Force or the heart of everything. <laughs> and we say, no, no, we're not done yet. We don't want to look back already. Although it's been so long, we are a band that wants to look ahead and explore and be, um, and, and be inspired by young people that still are just new on the block and do new things and crossovers that inspire everybody. And that that's, gives us energy still. So we still want to focus on the future instead of looking back. <laughs>